as equation 43, which goes in that direction. Uh, in, that, in equation 43, we're going to discuss two objects, and they typically have, I mean, they have what, quite standard notations. One of them is called the unit disk, and we use the letter D, upright, both face, letter D for that, or blackboard. Let's say complex numbers with absolute value not exceeding one. This one is called the unit disk on the complex plane, and that's the pinkish area on my, on my diagram. And the other one is called the unit circle, and the typical notation, typical symbol, which represent that set of complex numbers is T, again in the bold face. These are the complex numbers which are in absolute value exactly one. This is a unit circle on the complex plane. You can find lots of unit circles on the plane, of course, but when you talk about the complex numbers in particular, when people say unit circle, they mean precisely this unit circle, the blue circle on my diagram. I didn't, I didn't actually say what's the radius of this circle. It's one. Now, obviously, the unit circle is a sub, uh, subset of the unit disk. Relatively easy discussion we're going to have now is this. We're going to just discuss with you what happens, uh, like what are, what are the answers to the question, whether D or T close under addition, multiplication, taking the negative, and taking the inverse in case Z is non-zero. Addition. What's, what's your wild guesses will be for the addition? Uh, is D or is T close under taking plus I'm taking sum of two complex numbers. Yes, no? No. That's right, no. And in order to convince everyone that it is, the answer is no, we have to, I have to present an example. The best example which I come up, which I come up with is this. I take, if I take one, number one, here, which is a part which belongs to T and by implication belongs to G as well. But if you add 1 and 1, it will be 2, which is not, not even in D, let alone T. So the answer here, no, and the answer so here will be answer no. And here will be the answer no as well. What about times? Yes, no? Yes, yes for T or yes for G? Right? Yes, it is actually yes for both. It is yes for both, and this time you have to argue it somehow, and you can argue like this. If you take a Z, which is less than 1, less or equal than 1 in absolute value, and if you take a W, which is less and less or equal than 1 in absolute value, then the principal ingredient of this, it's a very short argument, so it's a bit, you know, big word, principal ingredient, but still there is an ingredient there. The principal ingredient is this identity for the absolute values. The absolute value of the product of two complex numbers is equal to the individual product of the individual absolute values. Each of them less than one, product will be still less than one. So in, in fact, that's the identity like this, which makes this happening, which makes the answer yes here. And actually, you can use the same identity for the unit circle. I was about to say torus, because sometimes this object is called torus as well, and that's the reason is we call it uh, the letter T is used, in fact. You don't see much of a torus in a circle, maybe, but that's another standard canonical name for this set of complex numbers. And that's the reason I was about to say it. I realized I didn't mention that. So you can, you can present the same argument for the torus. Uh, if you have two complex numbers which are exactly one in absolute value, by the same identity, you can come up with, you will see that the absolute value of the Z and W, product the Z and W, is one as well. That's why we have the answer yes in here. What about the taking the, neg taking the negative? Yes, no? Yes, 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 yes. It is yes, actually. Uh, in fact, yeah, it is yes. And originally, I was about to present this argument. I, I was about to say, if you have a complex number in exponential form, then 
the claim that this number in the unit disk is equivalent to the claim that the R doesn't exceed one, the claim that this number in the torus is, is the claim that the R is exactly one. Now, if you have a complex number in the exponential form, the negative of this complex number will have this exponential form. All you have to do, you have to add pi to the argument. Meaning that if your number was like this, the negative of this number will be also like this. And that's why we have the answer yes here, and the, the, the answer yes here. What about the inverse? Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I started my argument by saying originally I was about to present this one, and I just did. But in, in, in the light of this ingredient discussion, you can actually shorten this argument by saying the absolute value of the negative z complex number is the same as the absolute value of the z complex number. And that will be equally good argument. So effectively, this answer yes here and answer yes here, it is ensured by this identity for the absolute values of the complex numbers. Now back to the inverse. What do you think the inverse, the answer for the inverse will be? What is closed, what is not closed with respect to taking the inverse? D, is it closed? No, D is not closed, and here's a very easy counterexample. If you take a number one half, which is a part of the D set, but the inverse of the number one half, which we all know number two, is not part of the D set. So the answer no goes in here. What about T? Yes, and actually, you can argue this now, with the, if you use this language again of the properties of the absolute values, you can argue this like this. The absolute value of the inverse, oops, inverse of a complex number, this is the inverse of, a comp, uh, inverse of the absolute value. So if you have a complex number from the torus, for which the absolute value is one, the inverse of that one will be one again. And so the answer here, is yes.